Welcome to Marketplace Network and Pastoring God's Sheep. I'm your host, Pastor Timothy. My guest this afternoon is the Apostle Andrew Bills, founder of HSBN. Apostle, <laughs> welcome. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. First of all, Dr. Ken and I recently did a program on unity. Mm -hmm. And unity is something that I know with your, with HSBN and all the broadcasters you have there, you know a lot about. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe you could bring out a little more on that with how you started HSBN and uh, where it's at today. Well, thank you, uh, Brother Timothy. I love talking about unity because, you know, the word unity is, can be found in the word community. And unless people are together, it will fall apart. Right. Today we're looking at a lot of different agencies or groups or, or organizations that in fact have more unity within them than the Church of Jesus Christ. And it's a sad, it's a sad scenario, but God's trying to unite his people together to really impact this world. Now, I remember back in 2014, God spoke to me and told me to launch the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network. All I had was a little camera in my shirt pocket and I was running around filming my grandchildren. <laughs> and I, and I, I says, Lord, um, maybe you don't understand this. <laughs> and uh, I said those exact words. You need a lot of equipment, I don't have that. You need to know a lot of people, I don't know that many people. And uh, you need a lot of money, I don't have that. And I got quiet before the Lord and he spoke these words to me that have forever changed my life. He said, all you need is me. Amen. And on my face, I lay, I fell down on the floor and I worshiped him and I said, yes. So I didn't know how to do these things. I got up. I couldn't go into any network and say, God wants me to do a network. Can you teach me things? People will lock you up and throw the key away. So I began to search online and it was Greek to me. I wasn't getting it. And after two months, because I, I kept a log, um, after two months, I, I wasn't getting it and the Holy Spirit uh, supernaturally opened up my understanding and I finally got it and I mean I was rejoicing in my house I got it I got it I got know how to do this I understand but then I said wait a minute Lord nothing else has changed I still don't have the mon and money to do it I have no equipment I, I, I don't um, know a lot of people and the, the Lord spoke to me again in a powerful, loving way. And he says, ask me. Now, I thought about all the times in my life where I'd asked the Lord to help pay the house note or the car note or take care of the kids, something, you know, we right. all do those things. Right, right. So I finally said, Lord, if you give me $10,000, I don't know where I'm going to get it from, but if you give it to me, I might can do a little something. But inside of me, I knew that I didn't think that was enough. But that's what I told him. It was November the 4th, 2014, when I said those words. My wife and I went and rented a little post office box. And we go there every week just to lay hands on the P.O. box and pray. Well, on this particular day, which was December the 1st, 30 days to the day, um, we opened up the P.O. box and there was an envelope in there. That alone was a blessing. 
<laughs> I didn't know if it was junk mail or not. And uh, my wife reached in and pulled it out and opened it up, and I fell a check for $43,000. And she nearly fainted in the post office, and I was shouting all over the place. And God spoke to me and says, I just gave you your start, get busy. And we began totally dependent upon God for everything that we have, every person that's involved with us. Now here we are eight and a half years later, and we've been watched in all the nations on the world, 190 of them. Um, we had six or seven studios around the world. Um, people from every nationality, walk of life have been prayed for. And God has told me how pleased he is, but he just recently told me, get ready, I'm taking this to a higher level. And he's taught me some very important things. And I'm going back to unity, if I may, just for a moment. One of the greatest illustrations of unity is actually found in the Old Testament, in the book of Daniel. You know, many people know the story of the three Hebrew boys that was arrested by the king, and um, but they found favor in the eyes of the king because of the relationship with Daniel. But one day the king built this image and he announced, if you don't bow to the image, you're going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. And it was reported that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wasn't bowing. So he gave them another opportunity. He says, perhaps you don't understand. Maybe you don't hear it clear, the rules clearly. They interrupted and says, no, king, we understood the rules. We understand what you mean, but we are not bowing to this statue. They stood united. One didn't say to the other two, wait a minute, you know, we're facing death here. They stood locked together in spirit, soul and body. They, they stood together as one because they trusted in God. Amen. Amen. And they believed that God was able to deliver them but if he doesn't deliver them, they're still not going to bow. And the king, in his anger, heated up the fire furnace seven times hotter. How do you make a fire hotter? You make it bigger. And the word of God teaches us that the soldiers that threw them into the fire died from the heat. And But when they landed inside, they didn't perish. Now, some preachers say, well, God air conditioned the fire by stepping in <laughs> once they were thrown in. That's not true. Because one second in that fire without God would have been death for them. Right. He had gone ahead. He knows what we're facing before we get to there. And he knows what to do about our situation especially if we stand for him. And he wanted to show himself powerful. So when the king got ready to throw him in, God was already there. Right. The, the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ was there, was in that fire. On the outside, it remained at hot, but on the inside, it was air conditioning. And the king could see in and saw them in there dancing. And he recognized the fourth person as the Lord. And he asked the men to come out. There was, their hair was not singed, their clothes were not burned. The soldiers that threw them in were dead. So he knew that this was supernatural. God shows himself powerful anytime he needs to, to convince folk of how mighty he is. And God intervened because they were united in their faith, 
and their action and their stance. So wherever I go and I talk about unity, I can't help but go back there because it's one of the greatest illustrations in the Word of God. Amen. Why do you think churches today are not unified? Because more so people begin to move in the flesh than in the spirit. Someone wants to show how powerful they are or that they're in control. And when you begin to have these thoughts, you're putting yourself above the Holy Spirit, above Jesus Christ. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. Absolutely not. And you have people of every nationality, every background doing these things, making, trying to make you think that they're God, that they're in control, that they tell people who to marry, who you can't marry, um, and all of this goes on. And nowhere in the Word of God does it give a man or a woman this kind of power. The Church of Jesus Christ is the church is the bride of Christ. It's what he died for. It's what he commissioned. It's what he's coming back after. The devil realized when he couldn't defeat the church, he do the next best thing by getting involved in the church. And he tries to destroy it from the inside out. But if you walk with the Savior, if you dependent upon the Holy Spirit speaking to you, God will give you discerning of spirits, the word of knowledge, word of wisdom. He'll reveal to you if you're in the wrong building or not, and uh, and to get to get out, because you don't want to put your mind and your resources and your family under the instructions of someone who's leading you astray. Amen. Do you feel that if people understood the fact that we are actually the church, it might make a difference? Well, you know, I wished I could say more so if they would understand that, uh, Brother Timothy, but if they lack in that understanding, they lack in several other things. Some of them don't realize the power of Jesus Christ today. They don't reckon, they view God as some ash, abstract uh, myth, mythology, uh, mystical being that, you know, I even hear people talk even in the church when they testify. They'll say, something told me to say. Or, 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 no, no, no. Either God has spoken or he hasn't. Right. The only other voice that speaks to your mind is the devil. And he speaks directly to your brain. And uh, he tries to get you to move in, in logic or in, the, or in your flesh, which is contrary to the word and the teachings of Christ. So that kind of goes to a comment that I made before we came on the air, where a lot of the churches today are nothing more than uh, smoke and mirrors. Right. You know, um, we were talking off camera, and I shared something with you and uh, the president of the organization here. Um, that God taught me many years ago. He told the apostles, Peter, especially, and Andrew and James and John, I've called you to be fishers of men. We as preachers, we in the fivefold ministry, even outside the fivefold ministry, when you bear witness of Jesus on the street, our job is to be a fisher of men. Give them that word and, and draw them close to the kingdom so the Holy Spirit can present them to Christ and Jesus saves. Well, 
so many of the leaders today, they're not fishers of men, they're keepers of an aquarium. They, they want to point, how many fish I got? Look, I got 100 fish. How many fish you got in your tank? Well, we got 500. And then they'll boast on how big of an offering they got, or they'll boast on the size car they drive, or the, the size house that they got. Our boast should be in Christ. Always. It should be in Christ. How many lives have you impacted today? Um, did you did you pray for? Did you lead to the Lord? Did you love on? And we rejoice. We don't boast. We rejoice. Father, I thank you that you used me to speak to this organization or to that group of people. I thank you. You know, I used to preach on the streets of uh, the inner city of Compton and Watts, which was very tough. God had me out there preaching. And on one day, these two police officers walked up to me and I saw them coming. And the Holy Spirit said, don't worry about what you're going to say, I've got this. And so the officers came up to me and I said, how can I help you officers? And uh, they said, we have a complaint about you preaching out here on the street. And the Holy Spirit brought it up. And I said to the officers, officers, I'm working with you. And they said, what do you mean? I say, you arrest people after they commit the crimes, right? And they say, yes. I'm preaching so they don't have the desire to commit the crimes. The officer stood there scratching his head and he smiled and he says, you know what? Continue preaching. He said, go up and down the whole boulevard. Just don't stand in one spot. He gave me license to continue. And continue I did. So if anybody got mad at me or any shop owner, I said, the police told me I could do this. You see? Right. And I preached, all, it was 100 degrees out there that, that day. Uh, the man from the local um, chicken store came out and brought me chicken and a, a, drink, a cold drink. And he says, you're coming in loud and clear. Keep it up, brother. I said, thank you. Right. Only the Holy Spirit could do that. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. And, you know, we've seen men who carry guns in their cars who used to be a threat to the police, today are pastoring churches because we listen to the Holy Spirit. One day God told me to get in a drug line. I'd never been in a drug line. I was nervous about that, but I had to do what God said. And I got in the line, I was the last one in the line, leading up to this car, four men in there. And the Lord says, I'm gonna tell you what to say. And so the, the, it was my turn now. And the, the brother looked at me and says, what can we do you for, man? And I looked at him and I says, I got something that'll get you higher than anything you got in that car. He took his sunglasses off. He says, well, lay it on me, brother. And I start preaching Jesus as strong and as bold as I could. And for a minute and a half, they froze. Finally, he says, this is too much for us. And he started up the engine and they sped off. God says, you just plant it. Right. He says, somebody else going to water and I'm going to get the increase. If we do what he says, God's got to, I've had on three occasions, guns put to my head. Today, I haven't been shot. And the men that put the gun to my head are preaching the gospel. Praise God. God's more power. Who are you going to trust in? Who are you going to believe? You're going to dare to believe God? Somebody said, well, God gives you common sense. Sometimes that's the problem. We allow our logic to, to distract us from faith. Yes, yes. We, we, I've told a few people that uh, I mentor that you've got to have it in your heart, not in your head. And, uh, that's right. Paul said, the love of Christ constraineth me. He, it's, he, he, the Spirit of God pulls on you. He pulls out that love so mightily within you, you can't help but do what he says. We're driven 
because of love, not out of, of, a, of a debt. The fact that Christ so loved us, I don't, we were in deep sin, you know? Nobody paid us attention. Nobody wanted to be around us. We were in sin. Uh, I was so wrapped in sin, man, I was facing 20 years going to prison. And I lost my mind. And on the corner of Hollywood and Vine, God gave me back my mind. And I worshiped him loud and clear on that corner. And I, I, I thought people were going to laugh at me because I'm praising God out here. But then you've been to Hollywood and Vine, you see people, all kinds of people out there look strange and weird. So nobody paid <laughs> me no mind. And I'm worshiping God and glorifying him and praising him. And God spoke to me and he says, I'm going to raise you up from the ashes like the Hebrew boys. That when people look at your life, years from now, they'll never believe that you were homeless. Out here, you were thin. You were out of your mind. I'm going to raise you up. And God has just done that. Amen. He just, Amen. I was saved and set free. Boom, like that. But it took years of growth, staying in that word. And God worked on that. And when I got before the judge, you know, because I was being sentenced for some crimes that I did. Right. I, I've been fasting and praying. I said, Lord, whatever you do, whatever you decide, me and you, to life. I showed up at the court. And uh, I was the only one up there in the, 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 the building on the seventh floor. And I ducked in this hallway for one last time to pray. And I mean, I cried out to the Lord and I prayed. And a door opened on the side of me and a little lady with a, um, a, a, a rag on her head, uh, covering up her hair, and had a feather duster on her hand, came out and she says, what are you doing here? You can't be around here. These are private areas. I said, ma'am, I don't mean no harm. I, she says, are you here for a court trial? I says, yes. She says, just go back to the main hallway and wait. I says, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So I went. Finally, in due time, the court opened. The bailiff said, all rise. The judge walks in. Guess who's the judge? It's the lady who I thought was the janitor. <laughs> I still wasn't paying no mind. And so she stood up there and she told both sides, I don't need to hear from any of you. I've read the transcript. And Mr. Bill Stan, I stood up. She says, it's been recommended that you face, you, 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 you spend 20 years in the penitentiary and a million dollar fine. She says, what you don't know is when you were in that hallway praying, I was watching you on closed circuit TV. She says, I seen the tears. I heard your prayers. And I'm convinced that your life has changed. She said, but you want to make sure you never see me again. I still didn't know what was going on. I was nervous, you know. Of course. <laughs> she, asked, she asked me what time it was, and I looked at the big clock on the wall, and it said 3 o'clock. She says, it's too late for me to let you go, but you don't mind spending one night in the jail downstairs and be set free tomorrow. And I start rejoicing. And instead of 20 years, I got one night in county. And instead of a million dollar fine, she says, I'm going to charge you the $300 for the court hearing and a $40,000 fine, which you can pay $200 a month. And I just paid that off two months ago, by the way, $200 a month to pay that off. And then they, they, walk, they walk me downstairs to the cell. This is where it really got good. They didn't have an empty cell to put me in. So the guard says, you don't mind sleeping in the TV room, do you? <laughs> and I says, no, I don't mind at all. And you know, all they have with black and white, Lassie and leave with the beaver on there. Right. But I just sat there in a chair all night and just praised the Lord. Nine the next morning, they gave me my belongings and told me to go ahead. And I had to do three years for pro probation. Each of my probation officers became friends. I, and I witnessed to him about Jesus. Amen. Now you're sitting here with a man that ran 
for 60 years. Mm -hmm. Seven years ago, I seriously gave my life to the Lord. And in that period of time, he's brought me to where I am now, to where I can sit here in front of the cameras yes. and profess God, profess Christ as my Lord and Savior. Yes, it's never too late. We want to say that somebody's listening today and you might be feel like you're on your last leg, that things are hopeless. When it comes to God, there is no, no such thing as hopelessness or helplessness or impossibilities. You surrender your life to him and watch him make something out of your life. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew 6.33 says, and God will just open up the doors for you. And you turn around and minister to others and be an example. There's nothing too hard for God to do. Amen. My book that uh, you have in front of you there, My Journey to Glory, I never in my life thought I would ever write a book. And I sure didn't think I would ever profess to the things that I did in my life to the whole world. Well, this so. evening I'm going to sit down and read this and uh, let you know in a couple of days. But I know it's good because I've hung around you. I've heard the word of God. We, we have several men in ministry um, in our affiliation that were in the penitentiaries and Jesus met them there. I and, did eight and a half years. And now they're preaching, they're pastoring. I have two ladies that were prostitutes out on the street. One of them became wealthy as a madam. She was the biggest madam operation in Santa Ana. And God, God saved her and filled her with the Holy Spirit. And today, She's preaching all over the world. There's, it doesn't matter what you've done, how long you've done it, how, and how bad you've, you, you, what's sin. God can turn things around. Amen. Mm -hmm. I am going, we've got just a few minutes left, but I am getting ready to write my second book. Praise God. And I talked to Bishop and the doctor about it yesterday and uh, I've decided to go with why people choose same-sex relations and that will be based partially off of my book mm -hmm. and uh, I hope that when it does come out it reaches people and changes lives well you know we have a uh, um, about five people that were involved with the LB community you know right, the initials right. and uh, um, now they're saved and they've been set free and I was just teaching one the other day don't go out and condemn people to hell. Our job is to lift up Christ, a God of love. Amen. He, and uh, these, these ladies and gentlemen, now God has turned their lives around. That, that spirit has been cast out of them. And they're living productive lives. Um, for Jesus, and we 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 we're going to see many many more, and 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 um, even beyond the the gay community, because see, there's heterosexuals that are in worse sin than many of these. So it doesn't matter what label or what sign you're under. People need to know Christ. Absolutely, that regardless, there's 
There's no one sin that's greater than another in God's eyes. That's right. So if you do one, you've done them all. Well, the only thing that will keep you from entering into God's kingdom is not knowing Jesus. Amen. Amen to that. If you so fall true. in love with Jesus, he'll open up the world and your understanding and use you greatly. And I'm a living witness to that. Amen. Now, um, before I pray us out, is there anything that you have to say to the audience? I pray that they will receive the Lord, take it to heart, the words, look them up in the scripture and learn to trust God. He's a, one of the greatest revivals that's going on right now is in the nation of Iran. And more people in the past 15 years been saved in Iran than the whole history of that, that country. God is on the move. And I have some Iranian evangelists on the network. They got saved because they picked up a Bible to try to find errors in it. Right. And they got arrested by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so now I've wound them up, pointed in the direction, and as the Holy Spirit has directed me, and they are doing amazing things. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to close out in prayer. And uh, Father, we just thank you for this half hour Jesus. that you gave me with the apostle. I appreciate his wisdom that you have given him through the Holy Spirit. And I pray that the people out in the audience have received the words that were spoken today. Jesus. I pray that the spiritual ears and their spiritual heart was opened up to receive you and your word. Father, I just thank you and I praise you in the precious name of your son, Christ Jesus. Amen. This has been Pastoring God's Sheep. I am your host, Pastor Tim. I want to thank Apostle Bills for coming out and joining me today. And my delight. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you next week. God bless all. We'll see you next time.